Hi guys, in this video we're going to have a look at how we simplify fractions. Okay, so the first thing to bear in mind is what does that actually mean? Well, I've written out some uh, fractions here and they're all equivalent, which means they're all exactly the same. Okay, so if we have a look at a half here and two quarters here, how do I get from a half or one to two? I times by 2, and how do I get from 2 to 4? Well, again, I times by 2. Okay, so when I say they're equivalent, they're exactly the same, because if I times the top and the bottom by exactly the same number, in this case times by 2, I get an equivalent fraction. And exactly the same thing over here. To go from here to here, I times by 3, and underneath 2 times 3 will get me 6. So again, this is an equivalent fraction. If I keep going, that one I times by 4, 1 times 4 is 4, and then obviously 2 times 4 gives me 8, so again, they're equivalent, and you've probably guessed it, this one here I've times by 5, times by 5, this one here I times by 10, and on the top times by 10. Okay, so all these fractions are actually the same, they're all equivalent. Okay, now when I simplify a fraction or put a fraction in its simplest form, this is the one that I want. Okay, the fraction that is the smallest possible uh, fraction, or sorry, the smallest equivalent fraction. So all these are equivalent, all these are the same. I want the smallest one, so the numbers need to be the smallest they possibly can be. So obviously, a half here would be the simplest fraction or out of all these fractions that will be the simplest one so that's what we're trying to achieve we're trying to achieve the smallest equivalent fraction so i've got a few examples here so let's have a look so i've got 10 over 12 the first thing to do or try and spot is is there a number that goes into 10 and goes into 12 well hopefully you could spot because they end in a zero and a two or they're both even that two will go into it so if 2 will go into it, I divide by 2, both top and bottom, to keep it equivalent, to keep it the same. So 10 divided by 2 is obviously 5, 12 divided by 2 is 6. Is there a number that goes into 5 and 6? No, there isn't, so you can stop there. That's the smallest possible fraction that I can have that's equivalent to 10 over 12. Same thing here. Now, 2 doesn't go into 9, so 2 is out of the equation. But is there another number that goes into 9 and 21? This is where your times tables come in handy, because hopefully you could spot that 3 does. So I divide both top and bottom by 3. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7. So again, there's not a number that goes into 3 and 7, so I can stop there. It's in its simplest form. This one here, 10 over 35, well 2 goes into 10, but 2 doesn't go into 35 because that's an odd number. 3 doesn't go into either one of them, so that's out. 4 doesn't go into uh, either of them, but 5 does. Because it ends in a 0 and a 5, I know that 5 will go into it, into both of them. So divide by 5, divide by 5, so 10 divided by 5 is 2, 35 divided by 5 is 7, so I have 2 sevenths. And that's in its simplest form. Next one here, 14 over 35, again, check, obviously the 2, the 3, 4, 5, and so on. But again, if you're really good at your times tables, you might go, which number has 14 and 35 in that times table? You might notice it's 7. So if you divide both top and bottom by 7, 14 divided by 7 is 2, and 35 divided by 7 is 5. So again, times tables here massively, make, uh, massively speed this process up. So you might notice that what I'm dividing by here, 2, 3, 5, and 7, they're all prime numbers, so just one step. However, in this particular case, you've got some options. So, if you're really good at your time service, you might go into them go 16 and 20. Okay, 4 goes into both of them. So you might have gone straight in to divide both top and bottom by 4. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 20 divided by 4 is 5 to get 4 fifths. And again, that can't go any further. It's in its simplest form. Brilliant. However, you might not have noticed that 4 goes into it. You might have gone, ah, they're both even, so I can half both of them, which is absolutely fine. So you can divide both top and bottom by 2, and you're left with 8 over 10. 
Unfortunately, although this is an equivalent fraction, it's not in its simplest form. So if you do that step, which is fine, you have to check your answer and see, is there a number that goes into eight and 10? Well, yes, it is, they're both even again. So I can divide by two and divide by two again, which will leave me with four fifths. So as you can see, you end up at the same, uh, with the same answer. But since this one is uh, a two step one, which is absolutely fine, just make sure you do keep checking your answer and see, is there a number that goes into both? If there is, just do an extra step. The quick way, as you might have noticed, they got a four and a two goes into both of these numbers. Four is the highest common factor. It's the highest number that goes into both. If you find the highest common factor, like we did here, which is four, and you divide by the highest common factor, you'll always get the simplified or the fraction in its simplest form straight away. So if you can spot the highest common factor, brilliant, use it. It'll just be one step. If you can't, just do a few steps like I did in that one. It's not a problem. If I look at this one here, 42 and 68, again, times tables, I know that the highest common factor, the highest number that goes into both of these is 6. So if I divide by 6, both top and bottom, 42 divided by 6 is 7, 48 divided by 6 is 8. So you see, because I use the highest common factor, it's just one step. Nothing goes into 7 and 8, so I can leave it there. However, you might not have spotted that. You might have spotted that 2 goes into both of them because they're both even. You might have spotted that 3 goes into them because they're both even, in which case you could have used either one of those. Let's go with 2 because that tends to be the one that people do spot first. So if I divide both top and bottom by 2, 42 divided by 2 is 21. 48 divided by 2 is 24. Now again, this isn't in its simplest form because what number goes into 21 and 24? Well, 3 does. So you have to divide both top and bottom by 3. 21 divided by 3 is 7, and 24 divided by 3 is 8. So again, you get to the same answer, it's just this is two steps. Absolutely fine. Use the highest common factor, it's just one step. If you can't spot the highest common factor, just spot some common factors. In this case, 2 was a common factor, so divide both by 2. Then look at these ones. What's a common factor? Well, 3 is a common factor of 21 and 24, so divide by 3. So it's not a problem doing multiple steps, but if you can spot the highest common factor, it might save you some time in the exam. Okay, guys, hopefully that helps. Cheers.